Hello, Martha. This is where you kick in. This is where you kick All in. Right. All right. <laughs> hello, Esther. Hello, hello, hello. I wanted to bring up the part. I didn't have time to edit the specific part where you take over and you do your thing. And I'm like, uh, <laughs> <laughs> you, well, you know, I've been I've been sitting. Um, I I call it the green room. I've been sitting in there since four uh, four o'clock, and I um, I kept on. I said, you know what? I've been sitting here for a long time, and I don't know. But I did not click on the um, the enter button. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> so forgive me for being late. <laughs> I'm just sitting there like, okay, I'm, she's gonna she's gonna. Uh, uh, tune me in, in in a minute now, and I looked at the clock and I said, "Oh my God, it's 15 after. What's going on?" Then I realized I had not entered the room. <laughs> <laughs> and it's funny because there was a little, you know, this little Jiminy Cricket was like, "I wonder if she's coming on," because you know you can so sometimes sense energy. And then I'm like, I, I haven't even got a number to call because my my email is down at the moment, and I was yeah. trying to sort it out. And then I, I had to try and get my show sorted. Um, but so, you know, I'm just so, so glad to have you here. Oh, um, I'm glad to be here. It's a real too. pleasure. And I'm trying to find that part, like I said, where you kick in. But also, we are here to talk about your book. It's actually, two of your books yeah. as well. So there's going to be a lot to cover. And you look absolutely fabulous as always. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It, it's, uh, it's, you know, it's a, it's a beautiful day here. Um, I got up this morning, I, I went to church and uh, the sun was shining and I said, what a blessed day, you know, and uh, a perfect day to, to speak with you too. I hope the weather's uh, there is as good as, as it is here. It's cold. It's getting oh. cold. I mean, we've got the winter months, um, but it's, it's, it's cold. I think I found the part. Oh. It's cold. But the thing is... Um, even though it's cold, Martha, you know, you know, I'm still moving forward, still pushing forward. So that brings the sunshine. I mean, I'm tired. I don't I'm not going to to lie. And today has been quite a long day because, you know, I, I had to come home. I tried to get home early because I worked today and then the yeah. bus took a different route. And then I was trying to get something to eat. Um, I, ordered, I ordered my meal. And when I got there, they said, didn't you get our cancellation? I'm like, <laughs> Well, I'm, 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 I'm sending you sunshine and love and um, and after this, you make sure that you rest well so you can have a very happy holidays coming up and everything, yes. you know? Yeah, I will do. I will do. But before we do that, I just want to just play. I found the segment that I want to play. And, you know, I have to be very careful because I know Facebook sometimes cuts you if you play certain tracks for too long. But I just want people to get an essence of this lady, Martha High. She's she's a solo artist in her own right. She's also an author. And she's but she did sing with James Brown as well. So she's much more than, you know, just singing with James Brown. She's she's a woman on of so many talents herself. And I also I love your creativity in your flair so let's just have a listen to this <laughs> can i ask you one more time fellas i want you to bring up a mic because i want everybody to hear what you got to say mother what time it is Okay, okay, we leave that there. We gotta, you know, and there was a part where you just go down and um, brilliant, brilliant. Well, welcome to On the Sofa, Martha. It's a real pleasure. Always a privilege talking to you. 
Well, I um, feel the very same. I feel the very same. Always, always. Right, Martha, you know, the, the show this evening is talking to artists who've written books, whether it's about their life or another. So at first I had um, Gregory Williams from Switch because he's written a book, um, Switch, DeBarge, Motan and Me. And then I've just finished speaking to Brenda Wilson, um, yeah. the, the daughter of Jackie Wilson. She's written a book about her father. And now you. I've thought I had the details here um, it's, it's in the um, promo video so first and foremost my dear tell us about I'm going to there's the two books I'd like you to touch on the one that you wrote about your journey with um, James Brown and then your latest book so just give us a little insight into the book that you wrote first of you about your time with James Brown okay well the title of my book is he's a funny cat Miss Hyde and I chose that title uh, because uh, a lot of people don't know James Brown personally. They mm -hmm. don't know, uh, you know, the, the only thing that they mostly know about him is his accomplishments mm -hmm. and what he has done uh, through the years. Uh, well, I spent a lot of time with Mr. Brown because I was not only his background singer, I was his hairstylist as well. Oh, so, okay. yeah, yeah. So I, mm -hmm. I was his hairstylist for about 15 years. Mm -hmm. And um, I, I traveled with him when we wasn't uh, uh, touring. I would travel with him on his vacations and, you know, maybe special places that he needed to go travel to. I would I would travel with him because I was doing his hair. Mm -hmm. And um, I, I think that a lot of people know that uh, Mr. Brown, he would get his hair done in the mornings and then um, in, in the afternoon, in the evenings. If he was going out, you know, so it was like you could just probably say it was like a 24 hour uh, a gig, you know, job to, <laughs> because I had to be uh, I had to be there and I had to be uh, on, you know, right there. If he calls and say, Martha, I want you to do my hair. I had to be there, you know, so. Mm -hmm. Uh, so I got to know him very well. And uh, and in that time, you know, having personal conversations with him about, you know, all, all on all different subjects and everything. And Mr. Brown was very funny. He was a funny person. And um, he used to use this. Um, my title that I, I have, he's a funny cat. He used mm -hmm. to say that to different uh for, for different things that happen, you know, around him, if uh, maybe sometimes if he wasn't pleased or maybe if he had met somebody and they were kind of maybe strange to him, he would, uh, he would turn around and say, Is that, you know, that's a funny cat. <laughs> so <laughs> so I, I use that title uh, because uh, most people that know Mr. Brown, they know that he used uh, that, you know, that little uh, sentence there. So, mm -hmm. That's what I. Uh, that's why I gave it my, uh, the title of my book. Uh, that, and uh, just being around him, you know, I wanted people to know the more personal side of him, not just the James Brown, the entertainer, mm. but James Brown, the human, you know, the person uh, that he that he was. You know, he mm. was. Um, uh, he had, you know, his ups and downs. Of course, everybody mm. does. Mm. But uh, just being around him and and some of the things that he he said and would do would would really be uh, a surprise to me too because I was not only his you know I not only worked for him but I was with him for many years um, I started working with Mr Brown when I was uh, 18 years old and okay so I was uh, there wow. for 30, yeah yeah I was there for 32 years or a little more. Uh, and um, so he basically raised me, you know, because because um, uh, in the 60s, we were on the road quite a bit. You know, mm -hmm. I, would, I would get home maybe like a, maybe once out of a month or once every two months or something like that. So it was quite an experience to, to be around him and to to know him personally, uh, to know the things that he liked or the things that he didn't like and just basically uh, getting to know him and, uh, you know, there were times when uh, we were out on the road and the band members, uh, Mr. Brown, he, he had uh, not a temper, but yeah, a temper. I could say a temper, but I, I kind of knew when I would know his mm. ways and how he would feel that day before we got to the gig. 
And then when we would get to the gig, I would let the band and the singers and everybody know that, okay, he's not in good mood today, you know, so, mm -hmm. so be cool, <laughs> you know. Be cool. yourself. Yeah. yeah. And, and, you know, uh, so it was, it was quite an experience. So that's what my book is, is totally about. Uh, like I said, not, a, not of his accomplishments because everyone know, know them and just the personal side of him, a little laughter, uh, a little, a little uh, stuff about, you know, the ups and downs on the road and uh, being around him and everything. So it's, um, I think that it's interesting. I think that people will enjoy it. And, uh, it's been out. It you can you can purchase it on CreateSpace.com mm. and also Amazon.com. So okay, uh, I'm going to try and bring bring it up shortly because yeah. it's it's in the body of the promo video, and I'll play the promo video again soon. But it's interesting, Martha, because he was known as the hardest working man in the industry, and you are also known as the hardest working woman or female in in the in the industry. And so, do you think that a lot of that came from your um, initial time with James Brown and the discipline that you had to acquire to even be on that stage with him in the first place. And that's, you know, held you through till now. Yes, I, I, I really do believe that because, um, you know, being, and when I joined Mr. Brown, I was with uh, the group called the Four Jewels. Mm -hmm. And we had never worked on that caliber, you know, that uh, level of, of entertainment. And it was quite different because we, of course, we were doing our own shows before we uh, joined Mr. Brown. We were traveling and everything, but uh, going out on the road with him in the 60s, you know, Mr. Brown was at his peak. Yeah. And he was amazing. I mean, you know, to watch him on stage. I, I was a big fan of his before I even joined him, but I even became a bigger fan when I started working with him just to be right there on the stage. Mm. And and just, you know, I, I, I at one time I thought it was it was something going on uh, to make him be so speedy on his feet. You know, I thought <laughs> I thought it, I said they had to do something. <laughs> I don't I don't know what I was thinking, but they had to do something because I had never seen anyone move as fast as he did. And to be on the stage with him, I was mesmerized. I was totally mesmerized. And uh, then I also learned that, you know, to to work with him, to be on the stage with him, mm. you really had to pay attention. You had to keep your eyes directly on him. Because in a split second, he could change and do something else, go mm -hmm. into another song or, you know, just switch up uh, and, and you would be lost if you didn't watch him. Mm -hmm. So it was it was uh, it behooved us to to keep our eyes on him and pay attention and um, watch him. And it was a thrill for me. It was a, it was amazing for me because I did learn uh, the entertainment business working with Mr. Brown for so long. Mm -hmm. and. I, I feel that I have um, I have inherited, <laughs> I guess you could say, some of his ways, you know, because I, I, that's, that is the reason why he was called the hottest working man in and show business. Show because business. He was, yes. Yes, he, was, he was very, very um, particular uh, about how things uh, worked and how you, you know, how you would have to perform to be on his show. Mm -hmm. And um, I thought it was a great thing. A lot of people, uh, some of the musicians and, and singers in the past have complained about, you know, having so many rehearsals and so long and everything. I thought it was great because that's where that's how he became such a great person. He was very um, what, how do you say he was um, uh, particular and, and um, yes, he, yeah, he was he was he was. You know, he wanted everything to be perfect. And I feel the same way. You know, I, I love uh, I love to entertain and I want things right when I go on, on the um, stage. And he told me he told me once, this I never go on the stage without a rehearsal, you know, and don't be singing with everybody. With everybody, <laughs> don't be singing with you go to a club, don't get up on the stage with that man. You don't know him. He's just you. You just take it off. So you know, I there there were times. You know, yeah. I said, okay. You know, he's right about that. You know, because I have uh, 
I have been into a club, but uh, uh, and um, a band was playing, and they knew who I was and asked me to come up on stage. But that was a mistake, you know, because. Uh, and I, another thing that I found out Mr., about Mr. Brown, Mr. Brown never did a, a show the exact same way. It, it yes. was never, it was never the same way. Mm -hmm. Never sang the songs the same as the recording. Mm. So that's something that I've learned too. I, I, you know, when I'm with my uh, musicians and um, we, we're having rehearsal, they've learned the song and everything and I might do something different. And they said, yeah, but, uh, and Miss How You, uh, the, the record is, it goes this way. And I said, yeah, no, but I, I don't, I don't see it that way. <laughs> you know, so I have my own way and, and uh, I sing the way that I feel and, and everything. And that's, that's Mr. Brown, you know, that's mm -hmm. what he does. Mm -hmm. yeah. that, that split second, he would change up and go into another song or something like that. But, uh, the he's yes, he was a perfectionist, you know. Mm. Yeah, so it and was, in a, it was an honor. And in a sense, being a perfectionist, I mean, is is it's almost like you know, sometimes a bit like damned if you do, damned if you don't, because being a perfectionist is good because it means that you want certain things, you have certain standards and certain levels, and that's your bar. But then on the other side, there's that continual, you know, you never quite stop to. Um, see where you where you where you are and to appreciate it because you're always pushing to go beyond. Definitely. Um, and sometimes yeah. that could be um, our Achilles heel because I know that I have a tendency to be a bit like that. Um, mm -hmm. And I've had to learn to when I've got people who are strong enough to pull me back and say, Esther, you know, just just stop, smell the roses because you are operating at your peak. You are operating at your best. Um, and sometimes I do need strong people and there are people who can say, listen, you know, just take a step back. Yeah. Um, you know, finding the balance between the both. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Well, Mr. Brown was a very persistent person. And um, I think, point. you know, from his upbringings and everything, he he really always pushed to be the best. Mm -hmm. and, and that's what he strived every, every show, every time. And the rehearsals that we had, you know, even though he was maybe singing the same songs for, uh, for, for a long time and everything, but it was always, always wanting to make it better, make it, you know, just, uh, and uh, yeah, very, very, very persistent. And uh, that's why they called him the hardest working man in show business. You know? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. And even as you speak, Martha, you know, um, the station I'm on, you know, NN Soul radio platform, but also I'm on Soul TV platform where this is streaming live now, and it's a real blessing to be on that platform. But, you know, after each show, myself and Anthony B. Williams from NN Soul radio, we're like, okay, what can I do different? What can I do better? And it's nice to have someone that you can bounce off because, you know, you're, you're constantly raising the bar. Um, right. And it's, it's, it's always like, how can I give of my best? How can I mm -hmm. present of my mm -hmm. best? You know, mm -hmm. and it's almost as if you have that um, competition with, with yourself, which is, it's a healthy thing as well. And I, and I see that in you, um, even when you perform, I love, I've watched you when you perform and we're going to come to you now um, and to your book and to your solo career. Um, but I see you in your, you have some amazing outfits and then you do your little, you've got this little, little, you know, that little stress. <laughs> oh my goodness. My <laughs> Yeah, I think uh, you know, I, I call it I call it buck dancing. <laughs> you go say it for everything. <laughs> I call it buck dancing. It's because uh I mean I, I, I love dancing. I've always loved dancing and um uh, and I, you know, uh, back doing background behind Mr. Brown. Every song we we danced on, just about every song. Well, yeah, every song that we danced, you know, the background uh, singers and I, and um, and I was the one that had to teach the steps to everyone. All right, you know, okay. Yeah, all of the uh, singers that joined us, and it, it was fun because I, you know, I I I, I would study the songs and I try to. Uh, come up with um, with uh, movements that would uh, express the songs and everything. So it was fun for me, you know. And now, uh, you know, uh, performing as a solo artist, 
Mm-hmm. I still like to dance. I still love to move and and make gestures and everything. And I that, that's fun to me. You know, it feels good. And uh, I, I I guess I'm just going to continue buck dancing as long as I, I'm a singer <laughs> because that's what I love to do as well. Okay, excellent. Well, ladies and gents, I'm listening. I'm talking to, sorry, Martha High on The Sofa with Esther. We've just talked about her journey and her, her time with James Brown because she's also got a book out um, where she shares her journey. And so we're going to go over to a break. And when we come back, we're going to be talking to Martha High in her capacity as a solo artist. But also there's another book that she brought out. Was it last year, Martha, if I remember correctly? Yes, it was. It was yes. Yes. You see, I was talking to, to Brenda Wilson earlier, and she was trying to confuse me mm-hmm. that I was saying to her, it was last year that I came to Detroit. And she goes, no, it was 2020. Okay. And I'm thinking, but last year was 20. So I'm just making sure that I get my stats right. Yeah, <laughs> Senior yeah that's right. Yeah, it was 2020. Absolutely. Okay. Well, yes. we're going to go over to a short break now. And on the other side, I'll be talking to Martha High. <laughs> your senses back and I think we had a yeah. joke in our last um, um interview about that as well <laughs> oh, well Martha first of all I know I t- we're going to talk about there's so many other things that you've done now just give us a little bit of insight to, into about that particular track because it's um it's, it's it's quite recent as well isn't it yes Yes. 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 Yeah. Yeah. It it was um, the the album is uh, uh, titled "Got My Senses Back," Mm -hmm. and the song is "I Got My Senses Back," and it just basically uh, talking about dealing with life and um, you know uh, the world is crazy these days, and you know Mm -hmm. people uh, feel that they can take advantage of you, you know, especially when you get a certain age, (laughs) Mm -hmm. and. I, you know, I just wanted to like send a message out there, not 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 trying to bash anyone or anybody or anything or anything really, but just saying, look, hey, I I, I got sense, you know, I know what's real and what's not real. So, yeah. so you ain't got it like that to come and to come to me to try to get over on me and things like that. You know, that's just uh, that's that's what it's all about. That's what it's all about. Yeah, yeah. That's what it's all about. And, and and then there's a message that's coming through from someone. Let's see. Um, 
So we've got a gentleman by the name of Ron. Yeah. Ron that says, good evening, ladies. Greetings from the Netherlands. Good evening, oh. Ron. Thank you. Hi, Ron. Ron, thank you. And you know, Ron Rollerperson. I think that's how. <laughs> That's your phone. Uh, okay. These things anyway, happen. Uh, yeah, I, but Ron Rollerson is a very, very dear friend of mine. I've been to, uh, knowing him for many years, and um, I have to give him the credit of doing such a wonderful, wonderful job with mm -hmm. my uh, Facebook artist page. Uh, he does great work for me, and he's always there for me, and I appreciate him so much. So much love to you, Ron, and happy holidays, and thank you for tuning in. Hi, Ron. Thank you so much. And also, we've got a message from Rochester Williams. Good evening, families and friends. Have a safe and blessed evening. Same oh, to you, Rochester. And yeah. where are you hailing from, Rochester? Let us know. Let us know. Come on, peeps. Do interact with us because there's only about 15 minutes left before the end of the show. And I'm talking to Miss Martha High. She's known as the goddess of soul and also the hardest working woman in the <laughs> music industry as well. And, and we can see why. Now, Martha, um, tell us a little bit about your other book because um, okay. you did that in poetry but you did that in collab no you actually i believe you did the no, let, i'll let you tell tell yes. the audience yes uh, and, and you're right the name of the um the, the title of the book is soul to soul mm -hmm. and um it's soul the number two and soul and it's because uh there's a young lady the young lady that wrote the book uh with me with, that we did did the book together. Her name is Dr. Yamaja Jubilee. Mm -hmm. And her and I got together. Well, she actually came to me and told me that she was writing a book. And I said, oh, great. That sounds great. We've been friends for, for, for quite a few years now. And she told me that she was writing a book. And I said, great. That sounds good. And she said, you know, I'd like for you to be a part of it. And I said, how's that? I, I you know, I don't write poems. And she had a book out of uh, uh, a book of poems out before. This is her second uh, book. She told me uh, uh, her idea, you know, that she was um, writing a, at least about 12 or 13 songs or more. I mean, uh, I'm sorry, um, poems. Poems, yeah. And, uh, and she said, uh, she, I came up with this idea. I want you to, I'd like for you to choose a few of the um, poems mm. and create a painting that goes with it. And I said, uh, excuse me? <laughs> And I said, okay, but uh, that 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 sounds great, but I, I can't do that. I, I, you know, no, I can. She said, yes, you can. She said, I know that you paint. I've seen your work before, and and uh, I think that you you do a great job. And I'd like for you to to choose uh, some of my my poems and create a painting. And I said, oh my goodness! I said, I've never had anyone uh, really interested in my paintings. You know, um, it's a hobby of mine. Anyway, I told her, okay, I will think about it. Uh, and overnight, I, I thought about it. I really, really thought about it. And I was like, wow, I don't know if I can do this or not. You know, this sounds interesting. I, I've never heard of anyone doing anything like that. I'm sure there is other people that's doing something like that. Anyway, um, I thought about it. And a couple of days later, I got in touch with her. And I said, you know what? I think I'd like that challenge. I think mm -hmm. I'd like to try that. She sent me uh, about uh, she sent me all of her poems and she told me to choose the uh, poems that I would like to create the paintings for. And I did. I chose six of her uh, poems, which I uh, her poems are, are fabulous. They are all mm -hmm. great. And it was hard to choose. But I, I did. I was very fond of the six that I chose and I got to work. I started um, coming up with ideas and I could. As I read the poems, I could I could visualize uh, nice. what I would like to come up with, and and it came out to be really really a great um, project. Mm. I I was very thrilled, and every time I I painted um, a, a painting, I would send it to her and say, "What do you think? If you don't like it, let me know." You know, I I'll do nice. it. And she would tell me, "I absolutely adore it. I love it." And so I was like, "Wow, okay, that's great." You know, so it was quite an experience. Um, we really worked together, and actually, we're um, working on our second uh, volume. Okay. Uh, yes, and this is going to be a little a twist, a different twist to it. Mm. So. Um, 
it's i'm excited about it because uh you know we we talked about it and we said okay let's do it so hopefully uh around maybe the the first of the spring or or summer or something it would be it will be out so volume two of soul to soul oh so, excellent yeah. excellent excellent yeah. um yeah. And I'd like to share something else with you, Esther, uh, quickly. Uh, Dr. Uh, Jubilee and uh, her partner, uh, Professor Roy Boyd, they have actually written a play okay. based on my book. Oh, wow. And yeah, yeah. And I'm really excited about it. And uh, it will be premiering in um, Richmond, Virginia at the Firehouse theater mm. um, the first two weekends of August and that's uh, I'm I'm really really looking forward to it they have done a fabulous job and um, writing this play uh, for 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 me and I'm, I'm I'm thrilled I'm very very thrilled and so we'll be uh, we'll be announcing it uh, you know, uh, on on the media, uh, very very soon. Very oh, soon. excellent! You got my yes. number. You got my email. Your PS yes, number. Yes, your yes. PS got my email. Absolutely, absolutely. Keep me posted. Excellent, okay. excellent, fabulous, fabulous. Um, and you know, time is rapidly running out because I've got mm -hmm. about fourteen minutes left before the end of the show. But Martha, what have you got coming up over the next few months in terms of performing? And are you heading this way anytime soon, or have you been here? Mm -hmm. Or I guess I know it all depends also on, on the pandemic. Yeah. Um, but what are your plans? Well, uh, thank God that I have been uh, have started working here in the states. I, I uh, last year, I mean last um, last weekend, yes, uh, Thanksgiving weekend, mm -hmm. the day after Thanksgiving, I performed in uh, Bethesda, Bethesda, Maryland. Uh, with uh, Fred Wesley and the New JBs. JBs, yes. And, yes, the New JBs, and also uh, Mousy Thompson, which was a drummer for for the Godfather. Mm. Uh, Mousy Thompson and the James Brown Experience. We performed at Bethesda J Blues and Jazz uh, Supper Club. It was <laughs> fantastic. It was absolutely fantastic. Uh, December the fifteenth, I have a show here in uh, Augusta, Georgia. Mm -hmm. uh, with uh, one of my colleagues, one of the bittersweets, her and I have uh, gotten together. We're doing some projects together. So we're having an evening of jazzing it up oh, at um, a place called uh, Sheffield uh, in Aiken, South Carolina. So we're looking forward to that as well. Um, March the 5th, mm -hmm. I'm performing in Columbia, South Carolina at a beautiful um club called Chaz Lounge, a mm. uh, Chase Lounge, I'm sorry, a Chase Lounge. And um, I'm so looking forward to working there. It's it's a wonderful place. So that will be um, March the 5th. And then I'm on my way to Europe. Um, oh, excellent. <laughs> excellent. Excellent. Yes, Are you yes. passing through the UK? You've got to be. I mean, you can't go to Europe and not come I, to the I to certainly the hope so. I, I, I'm hoping that um, I'm coming that way. So yeah. I'll be in Europe from the middle of March through the end of a until the end of April. So, yes, yeah. I'm, I'm hoping that, uh, you know, doors will be open and mm -hmm. and I could come uh, to to um, London as well. That would be great. Me too. Excellent. Well, to the UK. I won't just say London, but to the UK. The UK yes, because the UK, yeah. there's many places to go. And, Absolutely. And, and and it's sort of in, in winding down with your books, what platforms do you have your books on at the moment, Martha? My books, you can purchase my book on um, uh, Amazon.com. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, so you uh, both books you can pr purchase it there on and, and createspace.com. So Create all you have to do is put the title in uh, uh, the title for my uh, show, my my years with the Godfather. So my 32 years with him. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a funny cat, Miss High. And like I said, you can uh, purchase it on createspace.com and uh, amazon.com. Also, uh, Soul to Soul. You can purchase that at uh, Create Space as well. Okay, excellent. I mean, excellent. Not create, forgive me. I'm sorry. Not Create Space. 
Amazon.com. <laughs> Amazon.com. Excellent, excellent, excellent. Yeah. And you know, you know, winding down because it looks like I'm trying to keep you here all night, but you know, I can't be doing that. <laughs> we we can do that, can't we, Esther? We have. We, <laughs> I think the last time we talked together, we went over um, a little bit of time. <laughs> We, we did, we did, because we were talking about one of your tracks. I, I don't know if it's the last one that you, you know, the one that you performed that you spoke about, uh -huh. um, you know, what, what was it coming back to my senses? What was the track name again? Yes, uh, got my, I got my senses back. I got my senses back. And yeah. I believe we were, we were giggling over that because I know you've just given the audience a little bit about what the song was. But, you know, basically it was about relationships, right? We just, let's just put it out there. It was about relationships. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah, past, past relationships, yes. Past yeah. relationships and just saying, you know, yeah, I got my senses but, back. So, you know, yeah. it was a really great interview. And, you know, I, I mean, I just got to just wish you all the best for the festive season and also for the new year. I mean, we've just come through some incredible times, Martha. Thank and, you. Um, you know, I know in the last interview you shared sometimes about in that time of the pandemic, you really stood back and you really did some soul searching. Yeah. Um, you reached out to people you, you wanted to, to apologize to. You reached into yourself to find out, okay, who am I? What do I want to be? Who do I want to be? And just started to clear away the stuff. And now, you know, it shows on you as well. You know, when we deal with our stuff, it shows on us. Yeah. Um, it shows on us. And so in winding down, what is it that you can share with anyone who's, who may be struggling with themselves at this moment in time, or even in terms of we're coming to the end of the year. Let, let's let's really embrace this time. What can you share with to the audience? We we need to embrace uh, this time and also remember that it, it, nothing is going to work. I, I really have to say this: nothing is going to work if you don't have faith. Hmm. Faith is everything. And you have to continue to to understand that um, you you um, that's where the love and that's where um, your feelings are, you know, and having your faith. And if you have that faith, you can be comfortable. You you're able to make your decisions. You're able to to uh, see what's coming and, and everything, because God is going to give you that uh, that worth to to be able to. Uh, relax and understand and, and look ahead and see what's mm. going on with your life, you know, and I think that's very important for everyone. And, and, um, you know, remember, I think that during the pandemic, it, it, I have to say it was a time where I felt like, you know what, this is the time where everyone can get together with their families and embrace their families, embrace themselves and, and understand that, um, it's not coming to an end. It's not the, the end of everything. It's, it's time to just get yourself together, you know, mm -hmm. to get your mind together, get your thoughts together, to to love, to start loving your family and, and be involved with your family and everything. And and, and even your friends, you know, even people that um, help others. We have to, mm -hmm. we have to, we cannot do everything on our own. And you have to realize that God, God is love and he loves all of us. And it's, and, um, this world would be a better world if we would just share love and and show love and help one another. You know, it's excellent. I think that's very important. Excellent, excellent. Well, Martha, as always, a real blessing. Thank you for sharing. Um, and ladies and gents, if you want to know more about what Martha's up to and doing, she's all on social media now, which I've definitely noticed. Um, and you know, this is another book. You know, she's got a couple of books out and I, I'll put the details up again on, on my Facebook page, which is on Soul TV official or uh, on Ellen Soul Radio or even on, on The Sofa with Esther. So you can, you know, it makes a great Christmas present and have a great read. Because, um, you know, like I said, you know, knowing about these legends and pioneers, we're all legends and pioneers in our own way. But these these are also great people that have left a legacy to inspire us to become the legacy for for others. So Martha, blessings yes. to you. Well, Wishing thank you. you so, thank you so much, uh, Esther. Can I can I just re, uh, say one more thing? You can um, indeed. Like I said, I'm coming to Europe. I'm going to be touring in Europe, and this time, uh, I, this time around, I will be with my um, my big band, uh, the Italian Royal Family, 
And, you know, we didn't have a chance to to really get out there and push our album that we had out, uh, which was called uh, titled Nothing's Gone Wrong. So we will be touring and we will be singing all of those great songs that we recorded. And, uh, you know, the tour that we were supposed to have in 19 in, in 2020. Mm -hmm. So it, it's getting ready to happen now. So I hope that everyone uh, come out and enjoy themselves and everything. Fantastic. And I'm sure they were because I've seen you perform before in, in London. You know, I was there. <laughs> so <laughs> all right, Martha, take care and um, we'll you. be in touch. Keep me posted about what you're doing. Yeah. Yes, I will. And happy right. holidays to you and all of your listeners and everything. Thank everyone for tuning in and thank you, Esther. I really enjoyed it. So, Bless you. Bless you. Right, thank so. you, Martha. Okay. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Bye.